Imagine a community being overrun by guerrilla bandits because a Christian father said no to his son being recruited by the illegal group. Are Christians being treated so harshly in North Korea that they flee to China for safety? These aren't isolated instances, but some of the normal experiences of the persecuted church around the world. Today, we'll learn more about these courageous Christians on Weekend Connection. I'm Vic Gregory. Welcome to our broadcast. We're glad that you could join us today, and our guest is Todd Nettleton. He is the Director of Media Development for The Voice of the Martyrs, which is a non-denominational ministry dedicated to assisting the persecuted church around the world. Brother Nettleton, welcome to our program today. Thank you very much. It's great to be with you. I have found that we here in America have a tendency to look at Christianity through the lens of our culture and experience, and then we conclude that what we know to be a walk with Christ must be pretty much what everybody else around the world is experiencing. Would you say that that's an accurate assessment, that saints in America kind of look at Christianity around the world that way? Well, I, I think you're right in that a lot of American Christians feel that way. They just assume, you know, hey, everybody must be pretty much like us. Their experience of being a Christian must be pretty much like ours. The reality, though, is that for most of the Christians in the world, their experience is a lot more what I would call New Testament Christianity, where uh, there is animosity towards Christians. There is even persecution against those who follow the Christian faith. Uh, that's really the kind of Christians that were in the New Testament, the kind of Christians that were reading the New Testament books originally were those who faced persecution. And uh, we don't often face that here in the United States, but for the vast majority of our brothers and sisters around the world, persecution and discrimination are a part of their faith walk almost every day. Hmm. You know, you speak of New Testament Christianity. Paul wrote to Timothy in 2 Timothy 3.12, Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. I like to think that is just as much a promise in God's word as John 3.16. Can you give us an estimation of the number of saints who are living in some sort of persecution today? Uh, I've seen numbers of people who will die for their faith this year. Uh, I, I've seen numbers of people who could face persecution. The, the number I've seen is 200 million Christians that live in countries where there is some form of persecution. Now, that obviously doesn't mean all 200 million of them are going to be persecuted, mm -hmm. but they potentially could face that. But uh, the, the number that we do stick by is about 53 nations where Christians face some form of persecution. And uh, every January, we produce a prayer map for our newsletter readers that says, hey, here's the countries where Christians are being persecuted. Here's the countries you can pray for this year. And again, that, that right now, that number is 53 nations that are on that map. I've seen that map at your website, and I noticed that they are characterized as closed nations. What do you mean by a closed nation? Well, we, we classify the countries where Christians are persecuted two ways. We, we talk about restricted nations and we talk about hostile nations. And the difference really is who's doing the persecution. Uh, in a restricted country, uh, what, what we identify as a restricted nation, that is where the government is who is persecuting Christians. There are laws against Christian faith or uh, people are arrested by the police and they're put on trial by the government. What we call the, the other countries is hostile nations, and that's a country where, you know, it's legal in theory to be a Christian. The, the, the government says it's okay to be a Christian, but within that country there are some actors which are against Christianity and are coming against the church. Uh, maybe one of the best examples of that is the, the nation of Colombia. Uh, it is legal to be a Christian. There are churches openly operating, uh, ministering actively in the nation of Colombia. But within that country, there are areas controlled by the FARC guerrillas, who are a Marxist-oriented guerrilla group. And they are 
actively persecuting the church. So it's not the government per se that's doing it, it's the FARC guerrillas, and that's what we call a hostile nation, where again, it's, it's legal to be a Christian, but there is still persecution there coming from somewhere within that culture or within that society. When we uh, talk about believers in these nations that are experiencing suffering for the cause of Christ, uh, give us a, a typical example of, of their existence. What, what would their day-to-day -day experience be like? Well, one of the things that's important to realize, and I think it, it's one of the things that I had to learn when I came to work at Voice of the Martyrs, is these are Christians who are joyfully following the Lord. I, I think I remember back the, the first time I went overseas, we were going, I was going to China, and we were going to meet with a pastor who had been arrested a whole bunch of times in the months before we were there. And typically he was arrested, he was held for a couple of days, and then he was released. And then the next week when he showed up for his service, he was arrested again. And I had in my mind this picture that, that we were going to need to go and cheer him up because, you know, he's under this oppression and he's been arrested all these times. And, and we're going to have to go over there from America and, and cheer this guy up. And then I sat down with him, and his wife served us tea, and we began to talk and drink. And he's got this huge smile on his face, and he's talking about, man, my church is growing really fast. There's a lot of new people coming to the service. God is just moving miraculously and remarkably. This is a great time to serve the Lord. And I was totally sort of blindsided by that because I thought, you know what? He doesn't need me to cheer him up. He's joyfully and actively serving the Lord in spite of the persecution and in spite of the suffering. So that's one thing I, I think people need to catch a hold of is this is not an oppressed, downtrodden, depressed group of people. These are people who are excited to serve the Lord. They're excited to see what he's doing in their countries. Beyond that, there is, you know, as different as the different nations. In, in some countries, Christians are forced to meet secretly. I, I think of North Korea, where literally a church gathering might be two or three people, usually all of them related to each other, because outside of your family, you don't know who you can trust. Mm -hmm. This person might be a spy for the government. They might be going to report us. So a church service, like I say, might be two or three people in the same family. Wow. In other nations, uh, I was just, just came back from Nigeria, and churches are meeting there openly. There are church buildings, you know, it's an open thing. But uh, in, in the town where I was, they no longer allow cars to come close to the church building uh, because of the threat of car bombs. And mm. so they literally, in that church, they keep the cars off of their property. They actually close the road in front of the church and turn it into a parking lot on Sunday mornings because they won't let the cars get close to the church buildings. We're talking with Todd Nettleton. He is the Director of Media Development for The Voice of the Martyrs, and we're talking about the persecuted church around the world today. And Brother Nettleton, certainly persecuted saints around the world, would call upon us and appreciate us praying for them. When I pray for the persecuted church, I, I sometimes have a struggle because I know that God is glorified through the persecution, and I know that the church grows through the persecution, and yet it's only normal for us to say, well, I don't want my brothers and sisters to suffer. How do we in America effectively pray for the persecuted Christians? Well, I, I think you're 100% correct that our sort of our natural response is, Lord, get them out of that situation. You know, send, send somebody to protect them. Send somebody to ease their suffering. That's not their request, though. And it's, it's, it's interesting to me, and it's an incredible act of courage, because what they're asking us to pray for is that they'll be faithful to Christ in spite of the persecution. Hmm. Uh, one of our workers some years ago was in, in Vietnam and asked a pastor there, he said, you know, pastor, are you praying that your borders will be opened? And meaning, you know, are you praying for political freedom? And the pastor looked at him and said, no, no, we're praying that heaven will be opened and that the spirit will rain down on us. And so that's their request. It is not so much for political freedom or for physical protection, but for spiritual boldness and the ability to serve Christ faithfully in spite of the suffering and in spite of the persecution that they face. Wow, what a testimony. Is there anything besides prayer that we as Christians in America can do for the persecuted church around the world? Absolutely. 
But I, I think it's important to emphasize that prayer is their number one request. Mm-hmm. Uh, as I have traveled into these nations, and, and I always ask the people, you know, hey, I'm going back to America. I'm going to share your story on the radio. I'm going to share your story with Christians there. What can we do to help you? Their first answer to that question is pray for us. So that is absolutely the first step. I think then the second step is to educate yourself. And, uh, you know, Voice of the Martyr sends out a newsletter that's free every month. That's one way to educate yourself. Come to our website, persecution.com. Educate yourself about what's going on, not just so that you'll have knowledge, but so that you'll be able to pray effectively. So start out by praying then educate yourself so you can pray more effectively. And then the third step is whatever God asks you to do. And that can be uh, writing letters to Christians who are in prison. Voice of the Martyrs has some tools to help you do that. Uh, It can be sending blankets that we deliver to Christians in Sudan or or packing an action pack to go to Christians in, in northern Iraq. Or, you know, the Lord may open the door for you to get on an airplane and go to one of these countries and meet face to face and maybe carry in some Bibles or or take in some Christian materials. But the first step is for us to pray and for us to educate ourselves and learn more about what we're praying for. And then the Lord opens doors for us to be involved. And I think at that point, it's it's an act of our faith to say, yes, I will step through that door that's opened. I will do something to bless persecuted Christians around the world. I also see that at your website there have been 130,857 emails that have been sent to government officials petitioning for the release of believers who are currently being held in prison for their faith. Is that an effective means of aiding those who are in prison? It is, and it's it's very effective because typically— These nations don't want the world to know what's going on. Uh, I remember early on in in my time at Voice of the Martyrs, one of our workers met with a former prisoner in China who was a a prisoner for Christ in China, and he said, listen, if nobody had ever heard of me, if no one knew my name, I'd be dead now. Mm -hmm. But because my case was publicized, because my name was spread around the world, it was harder for the government to get rid of me. They couldn't do it quietly. And so I'm a free man. I'm still alive. I'm out of jail. So we know that it absolutely makes a difference when we write letters, not only to to the prison itself, to the prisoner, but also to those government officials and just let them know, hey, this person is not a threat to your country. This person is a Christian who prays for their leaders, who wants to be a good citizen, and we can offer encouragement that way to government officials to let our Christian brothers and sisters go. If we wanted to be a part of that effort here in the United States, how would we go about doing that? One of the best ways to do that is our the website we set up for that, which is prisoneralert.com, prisoneralert.com. And that actually has a translation function on it so that, uh, you know, if you're writing to someone in Iran, you select what you want to go in your letter, and then it prints out in Farsi so that when it comes off your printer, you put it in the envelope. It's in the language of the prisoner so that when it gets there, they can easily read it and can connect and understand what you're trying to tell them. And uh, you select Bible verses, you select encouraging phrases to go into that letter, and then again, it comes out in the language of the prisoner. Okay, and what's that website again? Prisoneralert.com. Prisoneralert.com. We've been talking with Todd Nettleton. He is the Director of Media Development for Voice of the Martyrs. And Brother Nettleton, we certainly thank you so very much for your time this afternoon. Any closing remarks, uh, any more contact information or something else that you might want to share with our listeners? Well, I would just, again, encourage you to sign up for the Voice of the Martyrs newsletter. You can get that at our website, which is persecution.com. You can also call us toll-free, 1-800-75-VOICE, 1-800-75-V-O-I-C-E. Sign up for that newsletter. It will challenge your faith, and it will equip you to pray more effectively for the persecuted church around the world. Well, thank you so very much. It has been an enlightening time and certainly a challenging time as we have uh, heard some of these stories of how our brothers and sisters around the world are persevering and doing so with joy in their hearts as they are suffering for the cause of Christ. Thank you again, Brother Nettleton, for sharing with us. 
You're very welcome. Thanks for having me. That's our broadcast, and I want to share an update for our listeners before we go. This program was recorded some years ago, and at that time, the Voice of the Martyrs website listed 53 countries that were involved in persecuting Christians around the world. Today, that list has grown to 60 countries, and you can find that list for yourself at persecution.com. I'm Vic Gregory, and next week, we invite you to join us again for another topic of interest for the Christian community here on Weekend Connection on the Bible Broadcasting Network. Thank you for listening to this feature, a production of BBN, the Bible Broadcasting Network. BBN provides 24-hour Christian programming, great Christian music and Bible teaching. Listen to BBN by clicking the link in the description.